We're with comic book legend Stan Lee, and it's the end of the last day of your last New York Comic Con. So, you have a moment to take a deep breath and just think about what that means? Well, it's the most incredible thing in the world because wherever I go, people want my autograph. And people say thank you for all the enjoyment you brought me. And I don't know where you could hear anything better than that. I mean, I, I think I'm, I must be one of the luckiest guys in the world. In fact, we were kidding around. I may get a new nickname, oh my God, because wherever I walk, I hear somebody say, oh my God, that's Stan Lee. <laughs> it's just great to know you want it and that people actually appreciate the work you've done. There's no better feeling than that. Now, is there something special because you're a New Yorker and um, this is your last New York Comic Con, so is, are you going to do something special to celebrate here in New York? Well, I'm hoping I can even make it next year. It's just I, I don't know if I can. But one of the special things I'm doing, I don't know. Yeah, I hope I have them with me. Oh, Hands, yes, of yes. Respect. Hands of Respect. That's it. This is a little, these are two little things. I'll, I'll leave with you, in fact. It just occurred to me that with what's happening in the country, especially between the blacks and the whites in certain cities and the feeling and they don't trust each other or respect each other, if, if they could only get together, if we could only learn to respect each other. So I had these pins printed. You know how very often politicians wear lapel pins yes. that have USA on them? Well, to me, everybody knows they're American. What, you know, what is the purpose of that, really? But this pin, which has a black hand clasped with a white hand in a gesture of solidarity and the word respect over it, I think if everybody started wearing these, maybe it would accomplish something. So I've been making a pest to myself by talking to people about it wherever I go. I'm going to leave you these two. Thank you. And you're incredibly lucky, they're hard to get. <laughs> but anyway, that's what I've been, one of the things I've been working on. The other things, I'm with them. Um, you may know I have this company, POW Entertainment, and you've already figured out that POW stands for Purveyors of Wonder. And we're doing a lot of movie work now. We have a, something called the um, Annihilator a new supervillain, a hero, that'll be coming out soon. We're doing that with a Chinese company. We're also working with an Indian company on something called Chakra and another secret one. We're doing work with American companies, and all of a sudden, it's the movies are opening up. So it'll be more than just a cameo. We'll be doing whole... I, I won't be starring in them, but we'll be doing whole movies. But there is an excitement about these comic conventions that nothing can match. These people are so in love with the pop culture of comic books. And when I remember that decades ago, parents didn't even want their children to read comic books. And now today, without comic books, a lot of kids wouldn't even know how to read. It make comics makes readers out of kids because they've got to know the story and the only way to follow it is to read it. So I get more calls from teachers and educational organizations saying how great these comic books are. All kids are becoming readers and I'm talking too much. You must have something you want to say by now. No, I mean, this is great stuff. Um, I also want to ask you because you look at that lo long line of people who are... Um, you know, waiting for your autograph, they're all ages, including, you know, kids much younger than me. Um, I mean, what, do, what does that mean to you, that, that sense of legacy? It's hard to put it into words, but I get men who look as old as I am who come over to me and say, I want to thank you for my youth. And then I get these kids who follow me around and want an autograph and they want to talk to me and they talk about the books. And again, the thing about I think the thing about fantasy stories, if they're done right, they're for all ages. I'm sure when you were a kid, you loved to read fairy tales, stories about giants and witches and dragons. When you get older, you never outlive your, your love for those things, but you can't read fairy tales when you're old. Along come superhero stories, fantasy stories, and they're fairy tales for older people, really. And I think you never outlive your love for stories that are very imaginative. And, and that's what it's all about. 
I want to know too, because I know they're all your babies, but do you have one character or just one uh, run on a comic that was just your favorite of all time? Well, I guess probably Spider-Man, because he's become so popular around. You know, it used to be you could see Mickey Mouse in any country in the world. Now you can go to any country in the world, the kids who are in Spider-Man masks and costumes. So I have to pick Spider-Man, but I love them all. I love the Fantastic Four. I love Thor. I love the Hulk. I love Daredevil, the Avengers, the X-Men. Each one is something different to me. Each one has a slightly different theme. And they're all, luckily, they're all very popular. Final question for you. How do you do it? Uh, this long, this much, you know, such a creative run, how do you keep going? I think if you do something you love, you can't stop doing it, you know? Take a, a man who plays golf. They love playing golf. They'll play golf till they're 90. I love telling stories, and I love being with people and discussing stories and artwork and things of that sort. I, I love the enthusiasm of the fans. It sort of nourishes one.